Thank you for turning to page 121. Today we're going to go inside the DMG, the Dungeon Master's Guide, and we're going to look at uh, one magic item that is actually several magic items. I also just want to take a moment to please ask everybody who hasn't subscribed, please do. Let's keep the channel growing. And please take a look at my Patreon, see if there's anything you can do to help out there. Folks who have subscribed or are patrons, I want to thank you for, continue, for supporting my channel, and let's keep it growing. So, going to the Dungeon Master's Guide... We are taking a look at Qual's Feather Tokens. We're not really sure who Qual is at this point. I think there's been some information given on this individual. Uh, it was just a name to, to throw on the magic item. I like this magic item. I have used this magic item in a lot of different forms. So basically, a Feather Token is a small magical device of various forms to suit a special need. These various tokens are listed below. Each is usable but once. That was always a grumble that people had at my table about getting the tokens. They can only use it once, but they're very useful. Anchor, a token useful to moor a craft so as to render it immobile for one day uh, or any time prior to the command from the uh, token's possessor. I had a player do this. There was an enemy ship that was about to set sail and pursue the players as they took out, the, out of a port. This player was able to stay behind and put the anchor on the enemy ship and held it in place for a full day, thus giving the players a, a head start. He had Dimension Door, was able to Dimension Door onto the player's fleeing ship. So that was a really good use of Anchor. Uh, I like the idea, too, of just being able to kind of have an Anchor appear in somebody's arms, <laughs> but it doesn't work that way. I have done an Anchor that does it, a la Bugs Bunny, where suddenly you, you just hand an Anchor to someone. It's a really good laugh. Then we have a Bird Token. It can be used to drive off any sort of hostile avian creatures or as a vehicle of transportation equal to a rock of the largest size in all respects for one day duration. It doesn't say anything about whether you're actually skilled at riding this particular creature. I've always kind of given that a hand wave. I, I, the magic item itself is supposed to be beneficial. I'm not going to put people on a rock's back and have them drop from a thousand feet because they fail a proficiency check or something. So I've just kind of said, okay, the, the, the magic of the token keeps you on. Uh, then we have a fan. A token which forms a huge flapping fan which can cause a strong breeze. It, it's an area large enough to propel one ship. This wind is not cumulative with existing wind speeds. If there already is a strong breeze blowing, it can't be added to create a gale. It can, however, be used against the uh, strong breeze to create an area of relative calm. Uh, and the fan can be used up to eight hours a day. It will not function on land. So it only, it's only good at sea and only one time, of course, for up to eight hours. And because the fan itself is not anchored to the ship, it can propel the ship, which is kind of a neat idea, too. Uh, swan boat. I'm seeing a, a naval theme here. Uh, a token which forms a huge swan-like boat capable of swimming 24-inch speed, carrying 8 horses in gear or 32 men or any combination equal thereto, and the duration is one full day. So you can get on the swan boat and you can cross uh, a big lake, which is what one of my players used it for. Uh, and the swan boat itself actually swims, so I had two little uh, swan feet appear below the boat and just kick to propel the boat, and I had it commanded verbally uh, where it was headed. Uh, it's a nice little thing, and again, I, I kind of assume some of the magic is taking care of some of the questions as to what the swan boat actually can do uh, as far as maneuverability, but um, eh, it's D&D. It's magic. Uh, then we have a tree, uh, a token which causes a great oak to appear spring into being. Six foot diameter trunk, 60 feet high, 40 foot top diameter. This was used very innovatively by a player in one of my games. I had archers up on a, it was a ruined keep, but there, there were archers up on the battlements, uh, which were still intact enough to allow the archers to stay up there and put the players who were about third or fourth level under withering fire. Players were really stuck for how they were going to cross the open space to the wall until one of the players says, hey, I have a tree qual's feather token. Threw the, uh, the tree down, the tree sprouted up, gave them shelter. Uh, they, were, he was able to run, or they were able to run to the base of the wall, get in through some of the ruined areas, and fight the creatures atop the wall hand-to-hand. -hand. That was an innovative use, I thought. Then we have Whip. Okay, the Whip, a token which causes a huge leather whip to appear and be wielded against any opponent desired. It strikes a plus one weapon wielded by a ninth level fighter causes two to seven points of damage plus save versus magic will be bound fast for two to seven rounds and it works for up to six turns it works like a dancing sword 
So you're not actually wielding the whip, you're throwing the whip out there and it's fighting something else. Now, interestingly, if it does bind an opponent, uh, say it binds a, an orc, uh, it can't be used to strike again because it's, it's wrapped it up. Now, that counts against the six turns. So if it wraps somebody up and you're too busy to command it to untie him, uh, then you could lose the entire six rounds based on one, one hit and one failed saving throw. So you got to kind of monitor this thing to stay on top of it. Other similar tokens can be added as desired. One I did add, uh, nodding to Warner Brothers, was An uh, Anvil. Uh, and this could this particular feather token could be handed to somebody. You'd say the command word, and an anvil would appear in their hands, and they would fall down. I toyed with a dynamite one, except, of course, gunpowder does not work in Greyhawk, and it doesn't work in my Greyhawk, so I really couldn't do that. Um, I also did Qual's feather token of a ladder, which was extremely useful for the players. Uh, I've even done Qual's feather tokens for something as small as, like, a table or a couch. Just interesting little goo to to have in the dungeon for the players to come across and use. And uh, for the uh, table, for instance, I would just have it come up and be permanent table. A very nice table, but it was the feather token, but you could only expand it the one time. And players will find interesting, nasty ways to use this in combat. Uh, as I talked about the uh, tree and my anvil idea. And we're going to take a look at how many points you get for Qual's feather token. And you get... 500 or 1,000, depending on the uh, feather token itself, and then you get 2,000 to 7,000 gold pieces based on the feather token. We're not giving any guidance, given any guidance as to which gets which, but it's pretty self-explanatory. I think the, uh, the bird and the swan boat are pretty powerful. The tree, not so much. The whip, I think, is pretty powerful. So you just use your own discretion there. That's what I've always done. So that's all I've got to say on Qual's Feather Tokens. I've always enjoyed them. Uh, craft up a couple yourself. They can be a lot of fun, and they can be a great low-level item to give to a group of players. It could be a Feather Token that's just a coil of rope. Or maybe it's a bag of Feather Tokens, and they don't know which Feather Token does what, but they're all different colors. And maybe there's two of each color. And once they use one, they know, oh, okay, this one expands out and becomes a bridge. Uh, so it's the red one, the red one is a bridge. Okay, so now I have another red one. They can write that down somewhere. And it's a good way to have them experiment. I would not give full experience points for something like that. I would make it kind of a bundled experience point. Uh, but it's a good low-level starter idea for keeping temporary magic in your players' hands. That's all I've got to say today from page 121. I want to thank you for your time. Thanks for watching. And I'll see you next time.